Today, we're taking a look at Half Thor Bjornsson, aka the Mountains Diet, one of the most successful, popular, and biggest strongmen. I think this guy's, you know, six foot eight, six foot nine, incredibly tall. I think he weighs well over 400 pounds. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to say the least. You know, we've seen bodybuilders' diets, how they're incredibly high in macronutrients, you know, protein and starch, you know, without being mindful of food quality, of pollutant concerns of nutrient density so let's see what he has today what up guys today is saturday and today i'm competing at iceland's strongest man i'm gonna show you guys behind the scenes the competition and what i eat during a competition day and I so you can't actually tell that much right now but he has bell's palsy which is where one side of his face is paralyzed and usually that's caused to my understanding by a vitamin d deficiency and it'll correct itself his hasn't corrected itself yet it looks like his skin is a little tan he's been getting some sun and i actually sent him several emails of you know what issues i thought he was having and how he could correct them he never responded to my email but you know hopefully the guy's doing better and uh you know can implement some lifestyle choices that will you know reverse the bell's palsy and and get him looking as his normal self I have bacon ready. I'm gonna throw that here on the pan, and then I'm gonna make myself some protein pancakes. All right, guys. First things first. When I wake up, I take these vitamins on my on empty stomach. Uh, obviously, when I wake up, I drink some water. Then I take these. There we go. Bam. And is it? I don't know what's in those vitamins it's kind of crazy to look all of those up and he's sponsored by them are there certain vitamins you can be taking like certain b vitamins certain minerals xyz yeah but what he's taking it, it's very unlikely they would benefit the average person what you want to do is identify what deficiency or what issue you're having and then choose a targeted supplement for that issue Every single morning, I drink this by Transparent Labs, PCAs, and Glutamine. Uh, so it's very highly processed. You don't want to consume stuff like this when you can get your amino acids and your glutamine from much better sources. I think like high quality grass fed whey protein can replace any of these amino acid and, and protein supplements these bodybuilders are using. One scoop of this in my shaker and one uh, teaspoon of this. In my sugar. Or did they actually What's put the it? Himalayan salt for? Uh, sodium. Uh, it, it prevents, uh, for me, muscle cramps. It, especially today, I need to make sure I hydrate. If, so it's good for dehydration? Yeah. Okay. If, if you just look at the size of this guy, just his body, his stomach, his organs, his liver, this guy is able to tolerate more than any normal human being. And, and that's where genetics play a huge difference compared to someone like me. This guy's literally all his organs, his bones, his body is three times the size of mine. That means, you know, three times the antioxidant capacity. But if he's consuming three times the food, you know, that, that does raise some concerns. If I, uh, I've experimented myself. If I don't take a few times during the day, just like I want a teaspoon of salt in my drinks, I will get cramped up, but if I will, I will not get cramped up. So for those people out there that are having issues with um, getting cramps during the day or after or during the sessions, just try this. All right, guys, meal number one today. Pancakes, uh, we make a lot of pancakes. I think they're like 13, 14 eggs here, Kelsey? Yes. 13, 13, 14, yeah. So I'm gonna take a few, like, try to get at least six eggs and some almonds in me, you know. And there's three bananas in there. Three bananas as well. A lot of fiber. A lot of fiber, a lot. Chia seeds, almonds, flax seed, right? Yeah. Anyways, here I have some bacon. I'm gonna take, well, you're gonna need two, right? How many? Six here? I think, yeah, I'll have six. Okay. Six slices of bacon. This is great guys. This is gonna, you know, start the day great for me, fuel my body up with 
good nutrition, good energy from the bacon, good fats from the bacon. Here I have some orange juice, um, spinach, blueberries, <laughs> no! strawberries. No, I'm gonna fill no. Like Superman after this meal. His his girlfriend, his wife, his significant other is ruining everything. She's making him half vegan pancakes with eggs in them. She's putting spinach in his orange juice. This is going downhill. I'm placing a bet that Half Door's performance is going to go downhill. That being said, he's still eating some bacon. He's still having the eggs in the meal. He is still consuming the animal food, but it is a little bit concerning to see that someone has convinced him to go more plant-based as if it's going to help him. His silly wacko daco wife. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, if you guys want to know how to make these pancakes, my wife actually made a video the other day um, how to make these the right way. And if you want to make, make these the right way, um, go check her out on Instagram. You posted it how long ago? Like two, two weeks ago? A couple weeks ago, yeah. It's well, you'll, you'll find it, guys. Kelsey33. I love it. I love it. He can plug his wife a little better than that. So the concerns with this meal, uh, I don't see organic advertised anywhere. He didn't say it was organic. The bacon's not organic. Definitely agrochemical concerns. Omega-6 concerns from the bacon. You know, he's getting a decent amount of macronutrients, probably a decent amount of minerals as well. But, you know, overall, we're missing, you know, the components that we're really looking for in animal foods, like a super high B vitamin content, omega fatty acids, some vitamin K2. I feel my bicep grow. <laughs> right now I'm taking my uh, vitamins from Revive. The remainder of your vitamins. So this morning you took ones that you had to take on an empty stomach, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now I'll take these after my meal. Oh Whoa. my uh. god. <laughs> ah! <laughs> In, in some past videos, we actually compared his facial structure and development to his father and his grandfather. And, you know, they were much healthier. They had straighter teeth, um, wider faces, similar height. But, you know, there is a degeneration of our current generation. You know, things get worse and worse and worse from a skeletal development perspective as we're not getting as much sun, as we're not getting as many quality animal foods. And you can notice that through just his family. He's the first generation with the poor nutrition. I am a meal prep right now before my show. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take three of these thermos boxes with me. I'm going to fill this up with uh, rice and meat and some chicken stock. I'll put my vegetables that I have here in a separate bag and I'll just eat them uh, after my meals. I usually do it that way. This is like some vertical diet BS, which has no emphasis on food quality and also digestion. You know, red meat and rice for pre-competition, you could definitely choose foods that digest much easier than that. For three of this up, this should be enough for three. Yeah, this is super convenient, super easy to make. Uh, this is ribeye burgers and um, rice basically i go to a putsu store and i'll uh, buy ribeye steaks and i'll tell them to grind ribeye steaks up and then i ask them to make them into patties and then i'll grill them and it's fucking so delicious i'll close this up i'm ready Let's go compete. That's definitely healthier than his first meal. It's much cleaner. It's lower in omega-6. I think the meat and the rice sourced in Iceland might be better than the States. Chicken stock, I mean, again, as with anyone who's not buying organic, if you're not going to a local farm, there are the pollutant concerns. You know, if there's getting corn and soy in the feed of the animal products, there's the omega-6 concerns, there's estrogen concerns in the meat. But, you know, when you're taking all these performance-enhancing drugs and all this other stuff, it's hard to gauge how much that matters. We're on our way to Salfos. That's where the first event is going to be at. First event is Farmers and Sandbags, like a loading event. And just 
finishing up my second meal of the day. Uh, rice and a rib eye patty. Mm, delicious. These strongmen are definitely lacking raw and fermented foods in their diet. I mean, everyone's lacking raw and fermented foods in their diet, but you know, when you consume such a high volume of food, it becomes, you know, more apparent and more obvious that there's a lack of variety when everything's like heavily overcooked protein and starch. So we skipped through most of the workout and event footage and we're moving on to meal number three. I think it's the same as the one he just had. All right, guys, third meal of the day, I'm eating uh, um, it's still warm, still delicious. Um, I'm not sure if I told you guys before, but I think these thermos boxes can keep these meals warm for like up to 10 hours. So when you're traveling, uh, this is a great way if you wanna, if you don't like your meals cold. First two events done, super pleased. First and first, next up is deadlift. Now we're gonna try from Salfos to um, Kvergele. You know, are the nutrients degrading further by being at such a hot temperature for such a long period of time? Probably. Is it that big of a deal? I guess not. You can just increase your food volume to make up for the loss of macronutrients or micronutrients. So we skipped through some more training footage and another one of those thermos meals. Overall for the day, it hasn't been that bad. You know, breakfast wasn't perfect. He's not buying organic food, but we've seen much, much worse on this channel. You know, there's certainly a lack of micronutrient nutrition in his meals, a lack of raw foods, a lack of fermented foods, and we could definitely be doing better on the omega-3 standpoint, but it's it's not that bad. Meal number five. I promised you guys that I would show all my meals. Now I'm gonna cut up a little bit. Right here, I have rice and ribeye steak. That I, eat. I eat this basically almost every meal. Sometimes I go for a tenderloin instead of the uh, ribeye steak, but right now I, I, I prefer, prefer the ribeye steak because I'm competing. I need extra, extra, extra fat. Uh, some pizza slices to add up some, some uh, calories. And right here we have some spinach and orange juice. I'm gonna eat this. Who has convinced this poor man that he needs to put spinach in his orange juice. Dude, seriously, drink, juice them separate. You'll enjoy the orange juice so much more or have a salad separately, throw the spinach in the rice and beef or even better, throw out the spinach because it's not offering you any nutrition. You looked like Popeye before you ate spinach. This fuel up my body for tomorrow. Mm. Anyways. It's been a hell of a day. I'm gonna finish this. Um, and I have one meal left. My last meal, I might, I wanna go to bed actually early, guys. Um, so I might just, I have some pancakes leftovers. I might just throw some pancakes in me and just go to bed. I wanted to just show you guys the food I eat. I stay very consistent with my food. Most of my meals are rice and steak. I have carrots with it, peppers, spinach, um, always salted. Um, you can see the carrots, but I actually eat the carrots and peppers uh, on, on the side usually. I don't add it into the meal. Um, but yeah, this is a wrap, I think. Thank you for watching. Peace. I'm out. So he said he's eating a lot of peppers, a lot of carrots, and, and that could be a carotene issue. So compounding to his vitamin D deficiency, since vitamin A is antagonistic to vitamin D, and Bell's palsy, from my theory, is a vitamin D deficiency, uh, what he needs to really do is remove those high carotene vegetables and foods from his diet, uh, probably take a very high dose magnesium and copper supplement in addition to some B vitamins, maybe a B complex, a methylfolate, higher dose vitamin D, very high dose vitamin K2, MK4. Uh, I think with that as a base, maybe some iodine additionally, reducing the Wi-Fi, the EMF in his environment. And those are 
really general recommendations that I make to a lot of people, but specifically for him, uh, I think it would make a huge benefit. So hopefully he figures things out and starts doing better on his own. Uh, but you know, he's still a lot better off than most people. So thank you guys for joining me today. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you could please leave a comment down below, drop a like on the video and above all, please share on social media. If you can, if you guys want to support me further, you know how to do so down in the description. I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video. Thank you.